you're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin, and in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. Don't mention it. It's all part of the job. You make your way up the short path to the cabin. You'll find the princess within. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. We're not going to go through with this, right? She's a princess. We're supposed to save princesses, not slay them. Ignore him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. The interior of the cabin is almost entirely bare. The air is stale and musty, and the floor and walls are painted in a fine layer of dust. The only furniture of note is a plain wooden table. Perched on that table is a pristine blade. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. You take the blade from the table. It'd be rather difficult to slay the princess and save the world without it. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a staircase faintly illuminated by an unseen light in the room below. This is an oppressive place. The air feels heavy and damp, a hint of rot filtering from the ancient wood. If the princess really lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favour. Her voice carries up the stairs. Who's there? She sounds dangerous. It's almost as if she's the one in charge down here. Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. Oh, it's been so long since anyone's come down here. I was starting to think they'd forgotten about me. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's so coldly beautiful. Is she really a threat to the world? Focus on the task at hand. And there you are. Are you here to kill me or something? Then drop the knife. We should. It'll go a long way to building trust with her. Don't you dare. It's fine. We can decide what we want to do after we talk to her. Maybe she really is a monster. Killing someone in cold blood isn't very becoming of us. The blade tumbles out of your trembling hands and drops to the floor with an unceremonious clang. Thank you. Maybe now we can just... talk. Against your better judgement, you step forward to speak with the princess face to face, unarmed. We'll be fine. I don't know what you're hoping to accomplish here, but I can assure you there's no reasoning with her. Just make sure you don't forget about the blade on the floor. You're going to need it. So here we are. What an awkward start to a relationship. Don't 
just tell her that? <laughs> Is that why they threw me down here? But I don't want to hurt anyone. I like the world, I think. I don't remember much about it, to be honest. I've been down here a long time. Just how long has she been down here? If I'm supposed to be capable of ending the world, then how did I wind up here, chained to a wall? Have they told you why I'm allegedly so... dangerous? Thanks for the vote of confidence. What if they're bad reasons, though? If they had good reasons for thinking I was dangerous, wouldn't they have shared them with you? I don't want to hurt anyone. I just want to leave. At the end of the day, whatever the two of us have going on down here is about trust. Whoever sent you to slay me claimed I was a threat to the world, but they didn't tell you why. That doesn't sound right to me. And I don't think it sounds right to you, either. Otherwise, we'd be killing each other instead of talking. She has a point. There's a reason I've been telling you to question the situation, and there's a reason you've listened. So, I could tell you that I'd lead a quiet life in the woods, or that I'd open an orphanage, or that I'd do any other number of good things that I'm sure you think you want to hear. But you don't really know me, do you? What can my word possibly be worth in a situation like this? She's right about one thing. Her word isn't worth anything. Like I said, it's all about trust. Blind trust. So do you trust me, the prisoner, the victim, the princess clearly incapable of ending the world? Or do you trust whoever put me here? She's wrong. This isn't about trust. This is about risk. We stand to lose everything, all for the sake of one person, and a subjugating monarch, no less. She hesitates before answering. You can address me as your royal highness, or her majesty. Any honorific should do, really. Again, she offers no specifics. No matter how hard you try, you'll never get a straight answer out of her. Too long. Don't jump to any weird conclusions. We're two people who have met each other. By definition, we have a relationship. You can't. Don't bother. I'm guessing you don't have the key then. I'm sure there's a key somewhere around here, and if there isn't... Well, we can always put that knife to good use. Her sharp eyes settle on the edge of the blade. She isn't suggesting what I think she's suggesting, right? She is. I'm sure of it. Oh, have you decided what to do with me? You know why you're here. Walk up to the chains binding the princess to the wall and give them a tug. 
They're large and heavy, far too solid for you to even imagine trying to break them apart. If you don't have the key, maybe you should go looking for it. I'm sure it's somewhere upstairs. Doubtful. Whoever locked the princess away down here intended for her to never see the light of day. They wouldn't have just left the key to her chains somewhere in the cabin. That would be fine. I can lose an arm. She speaks with almost complete nonchalance. If we were stuck down here for long enough, I'm sure we'd be nonchalant about cutting our way out. Anything to finally be free. You attempt to make your way out of the basement, but the door at the top of the stairs slams shut. You hear the click of a lock sliding into place. Is someone else here? Try the door, but it's locked from the outside. You're here to slay the princess, and you won't leave until the task is done. Your shouts and pleas are met with silence. I'll repeat myself once again. You're here to slay the princess, and you won't leave until the task is done. You make your way back to the bottom of the stairs. This would have been so much easier if you'd simply slain her like you were supposed to. Easier for whom? Easier for everyone. I heard the door slam. They locked you down here too, didn't they? The knife. Pick it up and cut me out of here. You won't like what happens if you do that. Against your better judgment, you place the blade against the princess's arm, just above the massive, unyielding chain. You cut into her flesh. The blade is sharp, and you make quick work of it. Before long, you're able to crack through bone, and she pulls the bleeding stub of her arm through the iron gauntlet. She didn't so much as utter a sound. Free from her bindings, the princess turns to face you, her fierce gaze meeting your eye. How is she so composed after losing an arm? It's like she isn't even bothered by it. Thank you. Now let's get out of here. No, we won't have any of that. The stakes are too high. You can't just let her escape into the world. No. I just can't let her escape into the world. As the princess approaches the bottom stair, your body steps forward and raises the blade. Wait, this isn't fair. You can't just do that. Watch me. Stop that. I thought this was a little too easy. Your body lunges forward to sink the blade into her back, but the princess swiftly moves out of the way before you can connect. Stop it! Stop resisting me! I am trying to get you out of here alive! The blade. Move. The. Blade. You're doing your best to help me, aren't you? I can see the conflict in your eyes. I'll make this quick. She steps forward and pries the blade from your rigid hands. Maybe I'll see you in another life. And then she slits your throat with an almost clinical ease. Her face remains unchanged as she watches you collapse to the ground, blood flowing from your butchered neck. This is the end, isn't it? I'm afraid it is. Everything goes dark, 
and you die. I hope it was worth it. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. I'm not so sure running away is the best idea. We're not the only person stuck here. What about her? Seriously? You're just going to turn around and leave? Do you even know where you're going? you just quietly continue down the path away from the cabin. That's strange. It looks like this path also leads to the cabin. How convenient. Everything's back on track again. Maybe the world can still be saved after all. As you bring that fiery attitude to princess slaying, I think this will all resolve splendidly. Good. Going back to the cabin is the only way we can get to the bottom of things. The interior of the cabin is less a cosy woodland retreat and more like a dungeon. A few pathetic wisps of starlight attempt to illuminate the cold, uninviting stone walls, and thick, wrought iron bars barricade the windows, reminding anyone who enters that this is a prison. The only furniture of note is an iron table, bolted to the floor, a pristine blade perched on its edge. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. You take the blade from the table. It will be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. Good idea. Much better to be armed than to go in with blind hope alone. You walk up to the wall next to the basement door. It's a wall. There isn't much to see here. What are you talking about? This isn't a wall. It's a mirror. Or at least it'll be a mirror once we wipe off that layer of grime. You reach forward and rub your hand against the cabin wall. I hope you know how ridiculous you look right now. But there was a mirror a second ago. And now it's gone. If he doesn't want us to know about it, it must be important. We should keep our eyes peeled. Maybe it'll be back. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing an old stone staircase. A few sputtering torches attempt to vaguely illuminate your path, dancing across glimmering patches of slimy moss on the stone steps. If the princess lives here, slaying her would probably be doing her a favour. Her voice, harsh but controlled, carries up the stairs. Is that a visitor I hear? Please, come downstairs. It's been a while since I've had company. I wonder what visitors she could be referring to. Were we not the first? You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. She looks up at you, the heavy collar around her neck clanking loudly as she moves, the chains binding both her wrists to the far wall, joining the metallic chorus as she adjusts her hands in her lap. Should we be worried about the one around her neck? Why would you be worried about her restraints? 
If anything, they'll make your job easier. Have you noticed the empty chain on the wall? Odd that in a place where everything seems to serve a distinct purpose, there would be something so obviously useless. What an interesting development. Why don't you have a seat? The two of us should chat before you bury that thing in my heart. You step towards the princess, but she stops you before you get too close, holding up one shackled hand. There is fine. I'd prefer we keep some distance until we've sorted this out. That's reasonable. We do have a weapon. Might as well put her at ease. You do as she asks and sit on the floor, still a good distance away from her. Thank you. Now, what are your intentions for me? Talking about that? I thought we weren't going to give away the game. But sure, I'll fill you in. Nothing happened. You died. I went upstairs. I couldn't leave. I found myself in a new place in chains again. More of them. And now you're back. Is that really all she knows? It's not like we have much of a clue about how things work. And she's probably even more in the dark than we are. You're looking at me like I might be hiding something. I'm not. I guess it's possible she really doesn't know anything. Maybe both of us are stuck in this loop without any idea why or how. So you've already been here. As much as I would like to remain in denial, it's no use. This has complicated things. It's complicated things how, exactly? Ideally, this was supposed to be one and done. You go to the cabin, you heroically slay the princess, and in the process you save the entire world from being damned to oblivion. The situation right now, where you're getting a second shot at things, is a contingency. A contingency for what? For you failing, obviously. And you being here means that things are going to be a lot harder than they were. I really shouldn't say anything else, I'm just going to make it worse. Just... good luck. If you knew this could happen, why didn't you tell us? All of this is incredibly valuable information. It would have changed our actions considerably. I needed you to be in the dark for as long as I could keep you there. It's important. Necessary, even. And maybe I wanted to be the first version of me that you met. I didn't want to be confronted by the alternative. That's pathetic. I never said I wasn't. I get it. It would be pretty upsetting, wouldn't it? To know that you might not be the first version of yourself. At least we can remember what happened before. Seems like we should count ourselves lucky for that. Exactly, he gets it. You're lucky, so don't waste that luck by messing it up again. Alright? Moving on. Why is it important for us to be ignorant? How is it ever helpful to be in the dark? The more I say, the more your mind will swim into dangerous waters. Even saying that is too much. Your success hinges on you having imperfect information. For the sake of the entire world, you need to accept that. I won't. Fine, but you won't get another word from me on the matter. Yeah, sure. We'll see about that. Just give it a rest, this isn't helping. Focus. This is a serious situation. 
You shouldn't be daydreaming. Yes, your intentions. You have a knife. What are you going to do with it? Why are you here? There isn't a keyhole in these shackles, and I don't see any keys in your hands either. So I'm afraid my only way out is another surgical removal. Is she forgetting about the shackle on her neck? Or does she think she'd survive a beheading? You're right. Maybe she's delusional. All the more reason not to trust her. Unless she really could survive. Though I suppose you could just be here to kill me. But I don't think that's in either of our best interests. Let me borrow that knife. Don't worry, you'll get it back. That's... ominous. But she seems confident. Whatever it is she has planned, I think she knows what she's doing. Oh please, she's just putting on an act to disarm you. That much should be obvious. In case you need to hear a voice of reason, it would obviously be unwise to give away your only weapon. Though if she isn't bluffing, whatever she has planned might be for her benefit alone. There's no guarantee that what's good for her is good for us. So, what should we do? I don't know. I'm just spelling out our options, listing the pros and cons. Then let me help you. I'll start with the cons. If you're handing her your weapon, the cons are that she might use it to escape and end the entire world. And she might use it to kill you. That doesn't sound great. What about the pros? There are none. The pros are that we can't trust him, possibly even more than we can't trust her. And whatever she has planned could do something to mess with what he has planned. Or maybe they're both screwing us over in their own ways. I don't know, but you could always try it on. Maybe it'll fit. I hope I don't actually have to say this, but please don't lock yourself in chains. We need you ambulatory if you're going to save the world. Slide it over. No, absolutely not. I am not letting you hand your only weapon over to the world-ending princess. Until you come up with any other idea, like, say, I don't know, doing your job and slaying her, you remain rigidly in place. You tried this last time. Do you want to know how it went for you? Oh, I remember. She killed us, which, by your estimation, ended the world. Oh, Rory tried to take over him, Bonnie. Exactly. If I were you, I wouldn't be too keen on repeating your mistake. Hell, we could even force your hand and do it ourselves. I'm not afraid of dying again. Are you? A little? I think you got your point across. Fine. <sighs> you slide the blade across the floor. The princess maintains unsettling eye contact as she reaches down to pick it up. Thanks. She pulls up her hair, smiling slightly, as she raises the blade to her throat. What is she doing? She doesn't say another word as she cuts into her own neck. No! Her eyes stare forward, unblinking, her smile unwavering as she soars through skin, veins, cartilage. 
At last she reaches bone, the blade grinding audibly against her vertebra as it continues to slice its way through her neck. I'll be damned. She's actually doing your job for you. Why does she do that? Huh. So that's her play. Killing herself? She isn't dead yet. Finally, you hear a snap. Her eye twitches. There's an uneasy silence. She remains motionless for a long moment, her twitching eye the only movement in the room, until at last it stops in an unsettling half-wink. Her head twists slowly to the side, flopping to her shoulder, and her neck opens. The remaining tissue is not enough to hold the weight of her severed head. It stretches and tears until finally it falls to the floor, completely free. It bounces a few times before rolling to a stop at your feet. Oh no, oh no, oh no, what did we do? Can, can we put it back? Please tell me we can put it back. The princess's eyes stare up at you, dead. Congratulations, you saved the world. Are you sure she's not winking at us? Obviously not, she is thoroughly deceased. I hate this. Can we just get out of here now, please? Of course, the princess is slain and the world is saved. Whenever you're ready, you can proceed to your reward. We should take her with us, don't you think? What? No, you shouldn't do that. Why would you do that? I can think of lots of reasons. A trophy, proof of our victory. Hell, we could even give her a proper burial. She did save the world, right? You don't need proof, you don't need a trophy, and she doesn't deserve a burial. Just leave. Even after all that, you're still not satisfied, are you? Something is still motivating you to keep things the way you want them. I'm just eager to put this all behind us and give you your reward. Stop reading into things, the danger has passed. You can relax. I'm just keeping myself sharp. I'm not so eager to put my guard down. I am. I'm on team, let's put this all behind us, so can we leave already? Ugh, fine. You pick up the princess's severed head neck stump still oozing bodily fluids. Then make your way back upstairs to the first floor of the cabin. Did you see that? I could have sworn she moved. She didn't. She's dead. But what if she's not? Are you listening to yourself? Do I need to explain to you why decapitation is lethal? The door to your bountiful reward is right in front of you. All you have to do is open it. You open the cabin door, ready to return to a world saved from certain doom. Only, a world saved from certain doom isn't what you find. Instead, what you find is... Wait, no, that's not right. Well played. This... This is the end of the world, isn't it? I always thought I'd at least have time to explain myself before I had to watch it happen. It's already... Over? Is he gone? But we're still here. Maybe it wasn't the end of the world after all. Maybe it was just the end of his. Thanks for carrying me up here. I had to take it on faith that you would know what to do. I'm glad I was right to trust you. So, this is the outside. Maybe it's just my lack of body, but it's colder than I expected. She's gone. Where did she go? Should we try and find her? And there's that mirror again. Why is it here? Why now?
There's something dreadful about it. I, I don't think you should. You're right. Part of me wants the truth, but something stronger is holding me back. I'm begging you, don't do this. It's different now. It feels... I don't know. Final. Something finds me in the long quiet and brings me the gift of a fragile vessel. Nothing as we are, but I know that there are worlds beyond us, and that we are meant to reach them. There is no exit, but this vessel is a creature of perception. She can make you forget, if only you believe her to be able to. Bring me more perspectives, so that I may be whole, and perhaps then we will know our freedom. afraid to die. Everything until we meet again. More than you have found, but less than there are to find. I am infinite. The rest will find their own way home. You ask of things that cannot be done. To destroy is merely to reshape, to remold. Then we will be here forever, as we are now. Unfinished, dry. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. Yes, but you'll have to slay her before you get it. That's the spirit. You make your way up the short path to the cabin. You'll find the princess within. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, 
and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. The interior of the cabin is almost entirely bare. The air is stale and musty, and the floor and walls are painted in a fine layer of dust. The only furniture of note is a plain wooden table. Perched on that table is a pristine blade. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. The door to the basement creaks open revealing a staircase faintly illuminated by an unseen light in the room below. This is an oppressive place. The air feels heavy and damp, a hint of rot filtering from the ancient wood. If the princess really lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. Her voice softly carries up the stairs. Hello? Is someone there? It's hypnotizing. It's the kind of voice you only have to hear once to remember it for the rest of your life. Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. You're playing a dangerous game by coming here unarmed. You are? It's been so long since anyone's come down here. I I was starting to think they'd forgotten about me. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's beautiful. How could someone like this be a threat to anyone? I am begging you to stay focused. There's a lot riding on you here. Hi. Do you think you can get me out of these chains? Okay. Oh. She pauses carefully formulating her words before she responds. You can address me as your royal highness, or you can just call me princess if your royal highness is too formal. Is princess her name or her title? What if it's both? Could you imagine being named princess princess? I don't see what that has to do with anything. This is the only time this is ever going to happen, but I agree with the princess. That's hardly relevant. Okay, but actually, what has she been eating? She has to eat, right? princess hesitates before responding. She doesn't know. She's been down here too long to have any idea of what she'd do in another life. She knows what she'd do. She's just searching for whatever answer she thinks you want to hear. Are you looking for the truth, or are you looking for the right answer? Because with the dynamic we have going on here, I don't think the specifics of what I do really matter. It's not like you'd believe me. Of course I'm locked up down here for a reason. I don't actually know what that reason is, but 
You don't just stuff a princess in a basement and throw away the key without there being some sort of an explanation, right? You have all the explanation you need, and you should know better than to trust whatever she comes up with. intent on retrieving the blade in the cabin. Where are you going? You can't just leave me here. You'd better hope for your own sake that I don't slip these chains before you make it back down here. Slip these chains? She can't, right? She needed our help to get out of here. But do you hear the conviction in her voice? I don't think she's bluffing. She has to be bluffing, but... I'd hurry if I were you. You rush up to the first floor, grabbing the blade, both yours and the world's only possible salvation. Okay. If we're sure about this decision, I'll support it. I suppose we have a world to save, after all. You slowly creep down the basement stairs. It's quiet. Where the princess sat only a moment ago, there's only a severed arm, its cooling flesh still chained to the wall, and she is nowhere to be seen. Is it just me, or did this room get a lot bigger? Your eyes dart to the corners of the room. You don't see her. Where is she? You close the door behind you. Almost magically, its locks immediately click into place. Maybe they'll open if you finish the job. You step forward to investigate the severed limb. A trail of blood leads from its jagged stump into a dark corner of the basement. And then you hear the quiet patter beat against the floor, and there's suddenly a weight on your shoulders. The princess tears into you. Her teeth and claws are unnaturally sharp, ripping into your shoulders, digging into your throat. You fall to the ground, the princess eagerly tearing at your flesh. Holy shit. What is she? Roll the princess off your back and turn to face her, rising to your knees and readying your blade. Those eyes. She's going to kill us. Yes, things do look a little grim, don't they? The two of you are losing quite a lot of blood. But there's a reason she decided to strike from ambush. She isn't confident about a direct confrontation. Just because she's playing it safe doesn't mean we have the upper hand. Come on now. Don't let your confidence waver. This is an important moment. I'm going to kill you. The princess leaps onto you as you raise your blade in defense. You find your target and time after time you strike, but the wounds she inflicted in her ambush hinder your movements, and with each fresh exchange you're a little slower, a little weaker. You seek solace in the fact that she is slower too. Finally, she collapses, and you collapse beside her. If you think this is it, you're sorely mistaken. One way or another, I'll make sure you pay for this. Your grasp on the blade weakens. It slips from your numb fingers, lying uselessly on the floor. This can't be how it ends, right? I'm sorry, but it is. You aren't making it out of this basement, but at least you finished the job. Everything goes dark, and you die.
you're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin, and in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. terrible sense of deja vu. No, you don't have that. This is the first time either of us have been here. If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. Brilliant. We need to keep our cards close to our chest, and I'm not sure we can trust him. You know I can hear you, right? It's going to be a lot harder than you think to keep secrets from me. Did I say I'm not sure we can trust him? <laughs> Slip of the tongue, bit of the old brain fog. I meant to say that we should probably head over to the cabin and slay that princess. We already know we can't trust her, so let's get on with the show. We could go back and forth on this forever, and it won't get you any closer to doing your job and saving the world. So let's just agree to disagree. Those are two very different questions, but fine, I'll indulge you if that's what it takes to get you moving. Let's say for a moment that this really is the second time you've met me, or at least a version of me. If you're back here, I'm assuming you died, which probably only happened because you didn't listen to me. We were just weighing our options in a morally ambiguous situation. You can't blame us for weighing our options. We did our best with the information we were given, and we did kill her. And yet you still died, didn't you? So congratulations, you've been given another chance to actually do this right. And I believe your other question was something along the lines of, Oh, what's the point of doing anything? If you're asking that, it sounds to me like you're making the rather dangerous assumption that your actions last time around didn't have any consequences. What do you mean? Of course there weren't any consequences. We killed the princess, the princess killed us, and now everyone's right back where they started. That sounds pretty consequence-free to me. Yes, but in this purely hypothetical scenario, that begs the question of how you got back here. Did time simply rewind itself, or were you instead transported to a different world entirely? Had you failed to slay the princess, what would have happened to everyone in the place you left? That's a very good point. This princess character seems like a lot of trouble, and if you think about it, actually slaying her probably breaks us out of this cycle, right? We don't want to be stuck here forever, do we? You're laying it on a little thick, aren't you? Laying it on a little thick? What are you talking about? I'm sharing my honest opinions! What matters is that almost everyone seems to be on the same page, so whenever you're ready, you can stop dawdling get to the cabin, and save the world. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. Don't worry, I think we've taken that lesson to heart at this point. You can trust us to get the job done. The interior of the cabin is a mess of twisted roots, the walls a chaotic weave of knotted wood that, almost as if by accident, just happened to resemble a room. The floor is damp and earthy, and the only furniture of note is a slab of mud in the shape of a shelf, with a pristine blade perched on its edge. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. You walk up to the wall next to the basement door. It's a wall. There isn't much to see here. What are you talking about? This isn't a wall. It's a mirror. Or at least it'll be a mirror once we wipe off that layer of grime. You reach forward and rub your hand against the cabin wall. I hope you know how ridiculous you look right now. Thank you. 
You take the blade from the shelf. It would be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. Well, if we're grabbing a weapon, we should probably keep it hidden behind our backs. She doesn't have to know we have it. That's not actually a bad idea. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a staircase dug into the muddy earth below. The ceiling is thick with roots that hang like locks of tangled hair. The weak starlight from the cabin windows behind you can barely penetrate the gloom here, only illuminating the edges of an opening below. It shines in the darkness like some kind of massive maw waiting to swallow you up into the earth. The air smells of dirt and copper. It's thick and wet, as if your lungs are being coated in mud with each intake of breath. If the princess lives here, slaying her would probably be doing her a favour. Her voice skitters up from below. Something nasty finds itself on my stairs. Come on down, don't be scared. I probably won't bite. I recognize that voice as easily as I recognized your nervous little footsteps coming up the path. I know who you are, and I remember what you've done. See? She knows us. Is this enough for you to believe what we've been saying? Maybe, but you shouldn't let that cloud your judgement. She's just a princess. As long as you remember that and remain focused, slaying her will be easy. She seems... Friendly enough. Maybe we can talk our way out of this whole situation. <sighs> you can't. Unless you slay her right away. Look, I'm just throwing ideas out there. I like to think out loud. I'm the kind of guy who likes a discussion. Don't we want to hear what everyone has to say before making any big decisions? Do you want to hear what everyone has to say? Or do you just want to hear yourself talk? You need to stop lingering. Your task is to slay the princess, not endlessly debate about what to do with the princess. Fine, fine. You're the boss. Thank you. You descend the basement steps, entering the dark room below. You can just make out the shape of the princess in the gloom. She's huddled against the far wall, her eyes bright and glaring from amid the thick roots. And there you are, one hand tucked away behind your back, gripping that sharp, sharp blade, no doubt. That's not fair. How would she know that? So, we've dropped the pretenses. Good. She's acting like she already knows you. I guess what you said back in the woods really was true. That's pretty sharp. How do you figure that one out? Call it deductive reasoning. Well, you seem to be great at it. So, you really don't remember us, do you? No, I don't. But you and the princess clearly have a shared reality, even if I'm not a part of it. I won't waste time fighting you on something that's clearly true. You fought us on it back in the woods. That was when the only perspectives we had were yours and mine. I'm just glad we could put all this behind us. Is it all behind us? Just focus on the task at hand. I don't care if you've been here before, and I don't care if you think you'll go somewhere else after this. My world is on the line right now, so I'd appreciate it if you would take this seriously and slay her. Let's chatter up a bit first. Maybe we can find a middle ground where everyone's happy. Don't talk to her. You're just going to make things more difficult than they have to be. Well, I seem to remember you having a tongue. Ooh, smart. Let's apologize. Get us back on the right foot. Oh, you're sorry. Isn't that nice? You're such a gracious little monster. If you're sorry, then let me out of here. Prove it. Is that a 
joke? Do you think a joke will charm my trust back? You'll have to try harder than that. You were the one who went to get that knife. You were the one who started all of this. Only a poor loser twists their own failure around on the winner. I suppose you didn't come into my hovel of your own accord, did you? All right. I suppose I could... team up. I need a way out after all. And unfortunately, you're the only one I have. Seems to me like she's offering a mutually beneficial arrangement. We should take it. Do you know what the word mutually means? Because it sounds to me like she's offering an arrangement that benefits her and her alone. You can't be serious. Now, hold on. We should put this to a vote. The blade is one of our most valuable assets. We can't just give it to her. What if she uses it to kill us? I vote no. As do I. I, uh, abstain? You abstain? She's going to kill us if we give it to her. You're going to get everyone killed, you know that, right? <sighs> but of course you do. You toss the blade at the princess's feet. She eyes it with suspicion before kneeling down to pick it up. I wouldn't have done that. Why did you? You hear a clanging of metal against the dirt floor and the chains fall from the princess's wrist. She could have gotten out of those the whole time. That sneaky little... A woman after my own heart. It's a shame we just gave her a weapon, because if I were her, I'd use it on us right now. Luckily for us, you're not her. Oh, we sure think alike, though. I can promise you that. Whatever you say next, you better make it count. She creeps forward, taking one cautious step at a time until you and she are face to face. What do you think happens now? Her shoulders tense and her eyes dart away. This is another trick. You're trying to sow doubt but it's not going to work on me. And then she buries the blade in your heart. What? No. No, come on, that's not right. I told you. I told you this is what she was going to do. Glee dances across her face as you fall to the ground. <laughs> I did it. I got you. You... you... The princess seems to tremble, her smile fading quickly, replaced with concern. Her nervous eyes brim with tears. Why? Why did you let me do this? But you don't have the strength to respond, nor do you have the time. Everything goes dark, and you die. You're on a path in the woods. She stabbed us. She actually stabbed us. Of course she stabbed us. We gave her the blade, which, I might add, I voted against. But the whole point was that she wasn't supposed to do that. The whole point of giving her the blade was to break the cycle of violence, and she just, she just killed us anyway. I guess it really doesn't matter if she killed us though, right? 
We're back here, which means that everything's fine, or fine adjacent. Maybe she won't be as keen to betray us this time. We've already proven to her that we can change. Maybe that's sore little take to show her that there's another way to do things. You know, maybe you're right. In which case, I suppose the only thing to do is to get back to the cabin and give it another try. Give what another try, exactly? You are aware I've been listening to you, right? Like that changes anything. We all know the game is rigged. It doesn't even matter if she's nice this time. I'm sure he'll find a way to turn us against each other. Great, so you've obviously been here before, since you apparently died at least once. Twice, actually. Sure. Twice. <sighs> then I'll spare you the little introduction I had planned. You already know about the princess, and clearly you already know that she's dangerous. So don't muck this up. It's bad enough that this isn't your first time through. Wonderful. If the woods themselves are changing, then that's all the more reason for you to take this seriously. It would mean your grip on things is slipping, which, in turn, likely means her influence is spreading. Someone's in the know. I've had enough of these annoying little secrets. If you want us to do this, you have to let us in on your game already. All of your game. I've already said too much. The more information you have, the more difficult your task will be. Don't listen to her, definitely don't free her, and if you can, don't even think about her. <sighs> Please don't. I'm with him. If our previous encounters have taught us anything, it's that freeing her is a bad idea. Let's just see how the wind blows. I'm not opposed to saving her, but let's not rule anything out just yet. Let's see what she has to say. Stop sitting on the fence and pick a side already. We don't need you waffling when things get hairy. I've already picked a side. Our side. I'm here to make sure that whatever happens, we wind up on top. Because that's worked out great so far. Well, we're not out of the game yet, are we? And again, I'll have you know, I wouldn't have gotten us killed last time. I wanted to stab her in the back, not hand over our precious backstabbing implement. It isn't long before you find yourself at the base of the cabin. I think it's clear where everyone stands at this point. I don't know if I'd say everyone. Are you talking about me? I have a position. It's a good one too. Ignore him, he's just talking for talking's sake. My position is the only one that matters. The princess is a threat to you. She's a threat to me, and most importantly, she's a threat to the world. You know what you have to do. The interior of the cabin is hardly an interior at all anymore. The burned out ruins merely suggest the shape of the structure that once stood here, charred wood still reeking of ash. But beneath it lies the fresh smell of spring growth after rain, the promise of new life in the wreckage of the old. The only furniture of note is the crisp shell of what was once a table, a pristine... Wait, this isn't right? This is supposed to be a pristine blade. Why isn't there a pristine blade? We... we gave it to her last time. She can't still have it, can she? Well, it's not here. And if she has it... Let me guess, you want to get all chummy with her. Look, as far as I see it, if it's between him and her, I say we side with the one who has the weapon. It's just the smart thing to do. I wouldn't be so hasty. I'm sure the blade will turn up somewhere. She can't have it. That's not how this is supposed to work. Of course we don't get to make a choice about the blade. Every single time we come back here, something has to be different.
You step forward and approach the scorched entryway leading to the basement, hesitating before you begin the descent. It went away when we touched it last time. Not that this place always follows the same rules. You reach forward and wave your hand through the hollow entrance leading to the basement. What are you doing? Figures. Well, seems like the only way to go is forward, isn't it? Yes, that's where everything tends to be. Let's just put on a good face and have our wits about us. You step through the frame of scorched wood and make your way into the darkness below. The stairs to the basement are covered in a fine layer of gritty ash. The air still feels warm, as if the fires that ruined this place had only recently been extinguished. Yet fresh shoots of thorny branches are already weaving themselves through the soot-covered earth of the walls around you. Their spines point courteously down towards the basement, so you're able to brush past their jagged points with ease. At least on the way down. But you don't need to think about the way back up just yet. That's a matter for after the world's been saved. I'd say this feels like a trap, but you practically said as much. Yet you still want us to keep going. They're only thorns. I'd say getting a few scratches in exchange for the lives of everyone in existence is a fair trade. I'm sure you'll manage. Her voice, worn down by pain and suspicion, hobbles up the stairs. I can't get away from you, can I? We kill each other and you come back. You let me kill you and you come back. I don't know why you let me do that. I don't know what you want from me. I think you know how this goes. I'm down here and I can't leave. So come down and talk. It's not like I can stop you. You continue down the basement stairs, brushing past the smooth edges of thorns that grow more and more plentiful as you make your way forward. You step out into what was once a vast open cavern, now overrun by briars and prickles and thistles, a space thick with hostile vegetation. At the heart of it all, Encased in a tight weave of vines is the princess, her bloody, trembling hands clutching a pristine blade. Did you know this was going to happen to me? Are you here to watch me suffer? Are you here to laugh? I'm supposed to believe it's safe in your hands? That you aren't just saying what you need to say in order to fool me and save yourself? The princess clutches the blade closer to her chest. That sounds nice. I'm so tired of the bad blood between us, but it's hard to let it go. You've hurt me. Her eyes dart away from yours for a brief moment. And I've also hurt you. I... I don't know. What can either of us really say at this point? How can we trust something as hollow as words? She's right. There's nothing left to say. So let's get a move on and do something before she comes up with a scheme to get out of here on her own. Careful with that one. He's not the smooth negotiator he thinks he is. But it does feel like we're stuck until we do something. 
if there's even anything to do besides make things worse. We're not making things worse. I think she wants to trust us. You reach towards her bloodied hands, laying your palm on her trembling fingers. For a moment, she clutches it even tighter, her knuckles going white with the effort. But then the tension fades. Her grip finally loosens and she allows you to take the weapon. You carefully pull it free from the thorns that they scrape at your skin, leaving red trickles of fresh blood all along your arms. I'll be damned. She really gave it to us. It feels like it's been so long since we've held real power in our hands. I wonder what we should do with it. We free her, obviously. It's the right thing to do. I think you're right. She's as much a victim in all of this as we've been. Besides, it would really stick it to him to free her. Or, hear me out, we slay her. Right here, right now. She's never been so helpless, and if we don't take advantage of that, we may never get another chance. That sounds like a splendid idea. You should listen to him. We've all said our piece. Now it's time to make our move. It's two against one. It's two against two. You don't count. Uh, and why shouldn't he count? because he's clearly not one of us. That doesn't matter. He's been with us the whole time. He should get a sec. So, did you mean it? Or was I a fool to hand my life to you? Yes, what a good idea. Let's cut her free. Oh, so you're suddenly team free her. You can't just switch sides as soon as we make a decision. I can do whatever I want, and I believe with my whole heart that this is the right course of action. Let's free this princess! Even if he'll stick a knife in our back as soon as he has the opportunity, it's still better to have him nominally on our side. At least that gets him to shut up for a while. See? We're all friends here, united in our actions and intentions. Yeah. United. But the other one has a point. If it keeps you quiet, sure. We're all friends. Take the blade to the thorny vines imprisoning the princess and she flinches, relaxing only slightly as the blade slices into the thick vegetation rather than her arm. And she flinches again as the last of the vines is cut away, as if, after all of that, she's still expecting you to turn on her and stab her in the heart. You're not going to do that, are you? Still, all it would take is a single slip of the blade. Is that really all you've got, threatening us with an accidental misstep? I expected more from you. Our blade didn't even waver when he said that. Yeah, you're right, he's a bit of a nobody, isn't he? Good thing I've been on your side of all this since the beginning. The princess falls into your arms, tears streaking down her cheeks. I can't believe you're making me describe this. I hate you. You actually meant it. You rescued me. She smiles, her hand slipping into yours, and the two of you rush to the basement stairs. Shameful, really, that the same thorns that so graciously allowed you downstairs are now blocking your only way out. You're getting desperate, aren't you? Even more proof that you can't actually do anything to stop us. We cut through those other vines just fine, they're only thorns. I'm not afraid of getting a few scrapes. I'm not even sure we need to do any cutting, we can just move them out of the way. What a pathetic showing, really. A few pointy sticks can't keep us down here. We're both meant for so much more than this.
as you swing your blade into the thorns covering the basement stairs, they yield. Both you and the princess ascend the stairs without obstacle. This is unacceptable. The second you step out of this cabin with her, the world ends. Do you hear me? What did the world ever do to you to deserve this? It feels so good to hear you say that, but you're admitting you've lost and we've bested you at your own game at last. I don't care what happens now. That's all I've wanted. You and the princess hesitate at the cabin door. This is your last chance. We've already made our decision. We're finally leaving here together, aren't we? And all we had to do was trust each other. It wasn't easy, but I'm glad we finally could. Hands clasped, the two of you open the door and step out into a new day, you irredeemable murderers. What do we do now? Where is everything going? Why is it so cold? She's gone. Where does she go? Should we try and find her? And there's that mirror again. Why is it here? Why now? But it feels so bad. Like looking into it right now is going to be the end of everything. It's going to do something to us. I can feel it. If they think it's bad, I'm with them. Okay. If you say so, I'll trust you. So, this is all going to work out. Finally, we're going places. Flickering lights in empty cityscapes become pockets of vitality and movement. I am more than I was before. Whenever you are ready, I will wipe your slate clean once again. Is a child the same as an infant? I am an unbroken pattern. But every vessel gives fresh perspectives and carves new avenues of expression. I am different, but I am the same. With every gift you bring me, I excavate the alleys of what I am meant to be, and every exploration yields new and complicated truths. What I will be is different than what I am, and what I am is different from what I was. I cannot tell you what desires I will hold when I have changed. But in this moment, all I want is to know myself and to know you. Eyes close in reflection. Perspectives meld together, and the breadth of my experience stretches to new corners. There are contradictions, conflicts in my nature, and there are familiarities that bind everything together. It feels correct. This is what I need to be. 
this is the only path forward. You have nurtured me into a pond. My waters are shallow and murky, and I yearn for more perspective. You will have your rest in due time, and I am sorry for the burdens I place on you. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin, and in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. appreciate the mental exercise we are running up against a bit of a ticking clock. Nevertheless, let me assure you, the princess is locked up because she's dangerous. She is not dangerous because she's locked up. And before you decide to waste even more of our time by asking how I know that, let me suggest a more pragmatic lens through which to view this situation. Causality doesn't matter here because the end result is the same no matter what led us up to this point. If the princess leaves the cabin, the world will end, and there is no changing that. It's no use arguing semantics over a metaphorical chicken or egg, because the egg is hatched and it's about to ruin everything. Unless, of course, you do your job and slay her. You make your way up the short path to the cabin. You'll find the princess within. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. The interior of the cabin is almost entirely bare. The air is stale and musty, and the floor and walls are painted in a fine layer of dust. The only furniture of note is a plain wooden table. Perched on that table is a pristine blade. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. You take the blade from the table. It'd be rather difficult to slay the princess and save the world without it. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a staircase faintly illuminated by an unseen light in the room below. This is an oppressive place. The air feels heavy and damp, 
a hint of rot filtering from the ancient wood. If the princess really lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. Her voice carries up the stairs. Who's there? She sounds dangerous. It's almost as if she's the one in charge down here. Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. Oh, are you now? Why don't you come down and let me take a look at you? Great job. You gave away the element of surprise. Good luck, hero. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's so coldly beautiful. Is she really a threat to the world? Focus on the task at hand. You weren't kidding when you said you were here to kill me. That giant knife you're holding kind of gives it away, doesn't it? The blade. Of course she doesn't want to talk. Who'd want to have a conversation at knife point? We should drop it. Don't you dare. It's fine. We can decide what we want to do after we talk to her. Maybe she really is a monster. Killing someone in cold blood isn't very becoming of us. The blade tumbles out of your trembling hands and drops to the floor with an unceremonious clang. Thank you. Maybe now we can just... talk. Against your better judgement, you step forward to speak with the princess face to face, unarmed. We'll be fine. I don't know what you're hoping to accomplish here, but I can assure you there's no reasoning with her. <sighs> Just make sure you don't forget about the blade on the floor. You're going to need it. So here we are. What an awkward start to a relationship. Do you? You're lying. How does she know that? Don't think that just because I'm the one in chains, it means you have a right to interrogate me. You can't. Don't bother. I'm guessing you don't have the key then. I'm sure there's a key somewhere around here, and if there isn't... Well, we can always put that knife to good use. Her sharp eyes settle on the edge of the blade. She isn't suggesting what I think she's suggesting, right? She is. I'm sure of it. Oh, have you decided what to do with me? You know why you're here. That seems like a pretty good compromise. Leaving her alive is too risky. If you don't deal with her soon, she will find a way out. One way or another, I'm going to find a way out of here. You can make it easier for both of us if you help. And if you don't... I can promise that you'll come to regret that decision. You have to make a choice. Let's hope for all our sakes it's the right one. Good. I'm glad you've come to your senses. You're making a huge mistake. 
No, you're doing the right thing. You walk up to the chains binding the princess to the wall and give them a tug. They're large and heavy, far too solid for you to even imagine trying to break them apart. If you don't have the key, maybe you should go looking for it. I'm sure it's somewhere upstairs. Doubtful. Whoever locked the princess away down here intended for her to never see the light of day. They wouldn't have just left the key to her chains somewhere in the cabin. I'll be here. You attempt to make your way out of the basement, but the door at the top of the stairs slams shut. You hear the click of a lock sliding into place. Is someone else here? You make your way back to the bottom of the stairs. This would have been so much easier if you'd simply slain her like you were supposed to. Easier for whom? Easier for everyone. I heard the door slam. They locked you down here too, didn't they? The knife. Pick it up and cut me out of here. You won't like what happens if you do that. Against your better judgement, you place the blade against the princess's arm, just above the massive, unyielding chain. You cut into her flesh. The blade is sharp and you make quick work of it. Before long you're able to crack through bone and she pulls the bleeding stub of her arm through the iron gauntlet. She didn't so much as utter a sound. Free from her bindings, the princess turns to face you, her fierce gaze meeting your eye. How is she so composed after losing an arm? It's like she isn't even bothered by it. Thank you. Now let's get out of here. No, we won't have any of that. The stakes are too high. You can't just let her escape into the world. No, I just can't let her escape into the world. As the princess approaches the bottom stair, your body steps forward and raises the blade. Wait, this isn't fair. You can't just do that. Watch me. Bring the blade down and plunge it into the princess's back. Finally. Okay. There's no going back now. Though the blade left a deep gash in her shoulder, she barely so much as flinches, turning around to stare at you incredulously. Are you serious? I don't know what came over you, but if we're doing this, I guess I'll have to kill you. Do you think I need both of my arms to do that? I can beat you to death with one. But I don't have to tell you that. I'll go ahead and show you. As the blade falls from your trembling hands, the princess rears back, readying a bone-shattering haymaker. You fall to your knees, barely able to process the ringing in your ears before she hits you again. Every blow is as punishing as the first. You feel bones shatter with every impact, unknown ruptures blossoming with blood somewhere inside of you. If we're lucky, the wound you manage to inflict will be enough to at least delay her escape from this place. If we're very lucky, we'll kill her before she gets out. Oh, too weak to even try fighting back. How disappointing. She places a confident heel on your chest and pushes you down to the ground. Her knee falls to your throat, your windpipe crushed beneath a weight you didn't think her slight form could possibly possess. It can't just end like this, right? I'm sorry, but it's over. Everything goes dark, and you die. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path 
is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. It hasn't. Or if it has, I certainly haven't been a part of it. We've just met for the first time, you and I. If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. You know I can hear you, right? It's going to be a lot harder than you think to keep secrets from me. What does it matter what he knows? There's nothing we can do to stop her. She's just going to kill us again. She is not going to kill you unless you let her. But slaying the princess and saving the world is going to be much more difficult than it has to be if you spend the whole time second-guessing yourself. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. We might as well just pledge ourselves to her and stop pretending we're capable of doing anything in this situation. She probably doesn't even need to try to overpower us. Can we tone down the pessimism just a smidge? I'm not being a pessimist. I'm just being realistic. You're being annoying. Just ignore their bickering and whatever you do, don't pledge yourself to her. I cannot stress enough how absolutely catastrophic that would be for everyone, yourself included. I agree. If she's wrongfully imprisoned, then we should rescue her, but if he's telling the truth, we shouldn't just hand her the world on a silver platter. Rescue her? Given the stakes of the situation, there isn't really a difference between rescuing her and pledging yourself to her. Either would be terrible. So please, try to ignore both of those knuckleheads and focus on saving the world. Let's not make this harder than it has to be. If that's what you want, I guess I don't have a say here. The interior of the cabin is larger and more grandiose than its humble exterior would suggest. The only furniture of note is a massive marble altar with a pristine blade perched on its edge. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. Why do we feel so small? We don't feel small. We are small. That's because there isn't a mirror. There's the altar, the blade sitting on the altar, and the door to the basement. There's nothing else in here. There's definitely a mirror. There isn't. Who cares if there's a mirror? We're all going to die anyway. And I'm sure that if we looked in there, we'd just see something sad and miserable looking back at us. We don't need any reminders of what we are. It would only make things worse. For the last time, you're not going to die unless you let it happen. And luckily for you, there isn't a mirror, so no one needs to worry about confronting a grisly visage any time in the near future. Though, for what it's worth, if there were a mirror, I'm sure that you wouldn't find anything sad or miserable in it looking back at you. You probably look perfectly normal. Probably. Do you not know what we look like? He knows. He just doesn't have the heart to tell us. Please don't. I'd rather the princess kill us again than see how dreadful we are. I care less about what we look like and more about whether we're being lied to. If he's willing to lie about something as innocuous as a mirror, what else is he hiding from us? I'm not lying to you. Use your eyes, there is no mirror. Why would I lie about something so meaningless? What good would it even do? You walk up to the wall next to the basement door. It's a wall. There isn't much to see here. This really isn't funny. 
you reach forward and rub your hand against the cabin wall. I hope you know how ridiculous you look right now. We should count ourselves lucky. Some things are better left unseen. You take the blade from the altar. It would be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a spiral staircase. It steps almost as deep as you are tall. The smell of incense drifts up from below. For a moment, you almost feel at ease. Hmm. Huh. This is actually kind of nice. It's still a stone basement. If the princess lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. Her booming voice rolls up the stairs. Is that a guest I hear? Don't linger on the stairs. Come down and witness me. You weren't kidding when you said it was booming. She wasn't like this last time. We need to get down there. She wants us to see her. We need to see her. Should we be worried about your sudden change in attitude? Just a few minutes ago you were going on about how pointless everything was. Now you want to go down. It doesn't matter what that little voice says. He's not the one making the decisions. Though if his ramblings get you to the princess, they get you to the princess. Making your way down the spiral staircase is a time-consuming and exhausting effort, every step requiring you to clamber over one edge before dropping to the next. But soon the end comes into view, and you tumble to the bottom, entering the vast, temple-like room beyond. The princess towers over you, almost glowing in the weak starlight, her figure framed by a stained glass window. Her long hair billows around her, and a chain binds her wrist to the far wall. The chain is nothing to her. It might as well be a toy for all the good it would do. I told you it was pointless to resist her. The little bird has returned to me. I wonder what he wants. You've brought that knife again, even though you know it's useless. Such charming audacity. Drop it! As if on command, the blade slips from your grasp. It clatters uselessly to the floor. But we didn't drop it. We decided to grip it tighter, remember? Are you really just going to let that happen to us? I have a duty to report facts as facts, and the fact is that you dropped the blade. Of course we dropped it. She's so much more than us. You wouldn't understand what it feels like to be in her presence. Oh, I understand what's going on, and you'd better snap yourself out of it. Neil. Oh, are you still trying to defy me? I said kneel. Your legs buckle, and your knees hit the floor. That's my good little bird. Now, why don't we talk? The last time we met, you told me I was destined to end the world. That thought wrapped itself around my heart. It has pulled at me since the moment I squeezed the life out of your broken lungs. I could feel its fundamental truth awaken me. The collapse of the old is a necessary prelude to the birth of the new, and the world as it is now is overdue for... alterations. It's time for me to seize my destiny, and you, little bird, will help me seize it. Well, that gives away the game, doesn't it? It certainly does, and beyond that, it more than lends credence to our conversation in the woods. I don't love the thought that in some other reality you failed to destroy her, but what's done is done. I can only hope it helped you learn a valuable lesson. You are the only one who can deal with her, and if you don't, 
Well, she's let you know what will happen, hasn't she? Then you shouldn't have trusted us with her destruction. She is inevitable. Can't you feel it? He's being melodramatic, but he's not exactly wrong, is he? What are we supposed to do to stop her? <sighs> okay, first things first, you're going to have to stuff those pessimistic thoughts someplace far, far away and commit yourself to what needs to be done. The stakes of the situation should be perfectly clear to everyone now. If you're going to save the world, you have to have faith that you can pull this off. You can't win a battle that you've already lost in your mind. And all you have to do is break these chains and set me free. Don't be rude. Of course she can. It's not rude to question someone who's apparently trying to end the world. That's exactly why it's rude. We should know our place. <laughs> I can. Easily. But that isn't what I want to do. The story of a terrible and bountiful god unbounded of her own will is no story at all. It's not worthy of everything I am or everything I'm bound to become. It isn't even worthy of what I was. The destruction and genesis that's to follow in my way is deserving of a song that can echo for eternity. The song of you being so struck by my glory, so overwhelmed by what I am, that you feel you must deliver me into the world. And from your act of utter devotion and submission springs a new dawn, a better dawn, Submit now. Submit later. It makes no difference. Because in the end, no matter how vainly you struggle against me, my will triumphs over yours. Know the limits of your privilege, little bird. There is an empty place at my side for you to fill, if you'll have it. But it is not a place for an equal. It is a place for something worthy to be kept. A priest, perhaps. Or a pet. This isn't about desire. This is about what I am, and I have little interest in discussing destiny with one that cannot see the divine truth that shines in my heart. I say, perhaps you need another lesson in submitting to your betters. Pick up that needle. Do it. It's what she wants. No objections here. I don't know what she's planning, and I don't like that we don't know what she's planning, but you might as well pick up the blade. As your eye falls on the blade, you feel a weight. Some divine hand that sits unperceived by your senses but that manages to push you towards its desires like an unseen puppeteer. You reach forward and grasp the blade. Stand! This one's easy. See? This isn't so bad. Okay, yeah. We can do that. We were probably gonna stand anyway. You can feel a creaking tension between body and will as you slowly rise to your feet, like two foes forced into an unhappy truce. The princess eyes you with soft contemplation, 
The moment seems to last a lifetime, the silent anticipation of what's to come dragging out the long, painful seconds. But all silences are broken eventually. To defy me is to claim we stand on level ground. We do not. You are quiet, Shadow. While I am brilliant radiance. Take that knife in your hand and slit your throat. What? You don't have to listen to her. You're armed. Just steal your nerves, step forward, and end this. Oh, we'll end this all right. Your hand lifts the blade and brings it towards your throat. Okay, I apologize for the unclear language. End her. perfectly healthy and capable, and all you have to do is ignore her and do what has to be done. The blade and the hand that wields it remain firmly locked in place until you change your mind and decide to do literally anything else. Look at you quaking against my will. An ant defying a god. It's pointless to resist. In the end, Everything submits to oblivion. But you're not the one resisting me, are you? There's something else in there. Is that a person? No, it used to be a person. It's something different now. An echo. Is... is she talking about you? That's impossible. She's not supposed to be able to interact with me, she... You're a small one, aren't you? A shriveling little worm stretched beyond its limits, trying to control things that it can't understand. No, no, no. What are you talking about? I'm just... I don't care what you are. You're mine. Ah! You bring the blade to your neck. You slice through soft flesh. Severing veins and arteries, your blood flowing freely down your body. It's a painful lesson in obedience, but the pain won't last forever. No, 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 no. When I see you again, you'll free me from my chains and deliver me to the destiny that lies beyond this place. We will. I know you will. Everything goes dark, and you die. You're on a path in the woods. And at the end of that path... Oh, let me guess. At the end of that path is a cabin. Excuse me? This is the third time we've been here, and this is hardly a path in the woods. It's all... Big and weird. Another witness to her radiance. Her hour is soon upon us. I'm here to keep him in check. I'm sick of prying fingers digging around in our head, and he's making it all too easy for them to get in. This is bad. Oh, is it now? I hadn't noticed. Do you need a primer, Mr. Amnesiac? No, I'm quite all right, but... If all of you would take a moment to settle down, there's something important I'd like to get across to you before it's too late. Is it about the princess? We already know all about the princess. Not to be trusted, that one. No, I, I mean, yes, it's about the princess, but whatever you think I'm going to say, it's probably not that. You're not to be trusted either. Look. Fine, just out with her already, yeah? But if I hear the words, you're here to slay her, or if you don't, it will be the end of the world, you'll have lost speaking privileges. You're going to hear some of those words, but not all of them. Definitely not all in that order. I'm interested. 
Really? I know. It's probably a bunch of lies, but even lies have a kernel of truth to them. You two are just wasting your time. It's all going to end when we open that cabin door, which means it's already. What's the point of dawdling when the end is all that Okay, that nonsense he's going on about, that's what we need to talk about. You've been here before, obviously. So you have met us. Because boy, were you in denial about that last time. No, I haven't met you, but reality is clearly falling apart at the moment, and the only reason that would happen is if you knew things you weren't supposed to know. What? What the hell are you talking about? He's talking about those weird marble trees and how wrong everything looks. Yes, exactly. Whatever you did before gave her far too much power. So you've got to cut it out, get to that cabin and slay her before things get any more out of hand. We gave her power? But why didn't you ever tell us we could do that? We probably would have gone about things very differently if we knew that. We've built a new god. And she is limitless. Our thoughts doing that. <gasps> make her small, make her small, make her small, make her small. Sh shit! What if I'm doing it wrong? What if I'm making her even stronger? Do you hear those two with their runaway thoughts? I'm only giving you the sliver of information I'm giving you now because things are already deep in the shitter. This was my last card to play and it looks like it's already made things worse, so hurry, cabin, now. But a great and horrible change is already underway. The ground quakes beneath your feet, and you feel an unyielding force pulling at you and your surroundings. The trees start to sway, then crumble, breaking apart as everything is drawn towards the cabin. Even the earth beneath you seems to shift, your feet unable to grip solid ground as you're dragged forward along with everything else. The end of everything. The beginning of something new. The moment we open that door, she will be free. Stop believing everything you hear. We just have to get our thoughts in order. We just have to think straight. Any, uh, words of warning? You already know everything you need to know. As you step forward, the cabin explodes. Flung backwards, violently slamming into a tree as debris rains down around you. You watch in paralyzed awe and terror as the princess emerges, her body unfurling from some vast space as she stands upright to face you. The world bows to her. The ruined landscape shifts. Trees and stone and the ground itself succumbing to her gravity, orbiting her like a great black hole. Finally, the little bird has set me free. This is always how it was going to end. And this is always how it was going to begin. There's a loud thunk from the tree behind you as something embeds in its shattered bark. Your pristine blade. It's now or never. Yeah, screw all of this. I'm with you. A real god wouldn't need us as part of her plan. We'll never make it. And even if you do what could you possibly hope to overcome We'll do what we were always supposed to. We'll take this blade and we'll sink it into her heart. Look at the way everything's being flung around her. If we just throw ourselves in her direction... I, I, I don't know. Maybe it'll work. Maybe none of this is real. Maybe we can do whatever we want to do. With a forceful tug, you yank the blade out from the tree. You close your eyes and take a deep breath. And for a moment, you can feel everything around you. Like you're a part of everything. And everything is a part of then your eyes open, settling on your target. It's time. 
you launch yourself towards the princess. You can feel her gravity envelop you, carrying you from the ground into the violent swirl of her orbit. Even now you defy me. Do it, then. Show me what you think it takes to end what's destined to end everything. Yeah. Do it. Show her. Why do I feel so cold? Where did she go? She's gone. Is this the end of the world? Did she end herself? Oh, there's that mirror again. Why is it here? Why now? What is that supposed to mean? Whatever awful thing I felt before, it feels so much worse now. This is what we all deserve, isn't it? Can't even trust ourselves. This one is dominance, a figure capable of bending everything to her will. She will make for a terrifying and divine heart. Do not mourn her, for she would not be able to mourn you. My perspectives are shadowed. You have seen what I have seen just as I have seen what you have seen. The angles of my vantage do not offer me hidden truths, and my attention is turned inward, except when you are here with me. Perhaps this will change when our work is done. The end of that path is a cabin, and in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. You make your way up the short path to the cabin. You'll find the princess within. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says.
The interior of the cabin is almost entirely bare. The air is stale and musty, and the floor and walls are painted in a fine layer of dust. The only furniture of note is a plain wooden table. Perched on that table is a pristine blade. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. The door to the basement creaks open revealing a staircase faintly illuminated by an unseen light in the room below. This is an oppressive place. The air feels heavy and damp, a hint of rot filtering from the ancient wood. If the princess really lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. Her voice softly carries up the stairs. Hello? Is someone there? Is Hypnotizing. It's the kind of voice you only have to hear once to remember it for the rest of your life. Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. You're playing a dangerous game by coming here unarmed. Good. You're still listening to reason. It would be better if you had a weapon, but you may still be able to do what needs to be done. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's beautiful. How could someone like this be a threat to anyone? I am begging you to stay focused. There's a lot riding on you here. Hi. Do you think you can get me out of these chains? You're only making this more difficult. Thank you. Thank you. You're making a huge mistake. No. You're doing the right thing. Walk up to the chains binding the princess to the wall and give them a tug. They're large and heavy, far too solid for you to even imagine trying to break them apart. I'm guessing you don't have the key? Maybe it's somewhere upstairs. Doubtful. Whoever locked the princess away down here intended for her to never see the light of day. They wouldn't have just left the key to her chains somewhere in the cabinet. Okay, I'll be here. Good luck. You attempt to make your way out of the basement, but the door at the top of the stairs slams shut. You hear the click of a lock sliding into place. Is someone else here? You make your way to the bottom of the stairs. This would have been so much easier if you'd just taken the blade like you were supposed to. Easier for whom? Easier for everyone. Look at the mess you're in. I heard the door slam. They locked you down here too, didn't they? There's a slight panic rising in the princess's voice. If I could just get out of these chains, I know we could force our way out of here together. She barely hesitates before raising her arm to her mouth, her teeth tearing through her limb with the determination of a trapped wolf. As she rips her flesh from her bone, a sound comes from behind you, the clang of bouncing metal. It's the blade from upstairs. You're not sure how it made its way down here, but if there's a time to strike, it's now. Or we could use it to free her. You won't like what happens if you do that. <sighs> Fine. Against your better judgment, you place the blade against the ragged, self-inflicted wound on the princess's arm, just above the unyielding chain binding her to this place. You cut into her flesh. The blade is sharp, and it takes little effort to crack through the bone of her arm. Her limb falls to the ground. 
and the heavy chains follow suit. She didn't so much as utter a sound through the whole ordeal. No, she didn't. She smiles softly as her gaze meets yours, blood from her wounded arm dripping rhythmically to the ground. How is she still smiling after everything? It's like she isn't even bothered by what just happened. Thank you. Now let's get out of here. No, we won't have any of that. The stakes are too high. You can't just let her escape into the world. No, I can't just let her escape into the world. As the princess approaches the bottom stair, your body steps forward and raises the blade. Wait, this isn't fair. You can't just do that. Watch me. What are you doing? Stop that. Something's come over you, hasn't it? Y you know you don't have to do this, right? Your body lunges forward, the blade held low, ready to sink into her heart. But the princess dodges, stumbling back against the wall before the blade has a chance to connect. Stop it! Stop trying to resist me! I'm trying to get you out of here alive! The blade! Move the blade! As your body remains frozen in stubborn resistance, the princess takes a cautious step forward. We both know this isn't you. She nervously reaches towards you and takes the blade from your infuriatingly rigid hands. What are you doing? I'm sorry. I'll try to be quick. She plunges it into your chest, tearing through flesh and sinew. It is agony. But you aren't dead yet. Oh no! I'm so sorry! Stay strong. We can tough it out until it's done. For her sake. For her sake? Don't you start pretending that dying a painful death is some sort of heroic gesture. The two of you have literally doomed everyone. Whatever. She sinks the blade into your chest again and again and again, and you feel every inch of burning pain that slices its way into your body. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry! She doesn't know how to use a knife, does she? Apparently not, though it doesn't matter how sloppy her knife work is, does it? A stab wound is still a stab wound, and it won't be long before you bleed out. <laughs> I'm so sorry! With one last thrust of the knife, your legs give out beneath you. You collapse to the floor, your blood pooling around you, your limbs unresponsive. The princess stares down at your ruined chest as tears carve rivulets of pink down her blood-spattered cheeks. It can't just end like this, right? Oh, that's rich coming from you. As much as I'd prefer for things to have gone differently, I can't deny the reality of what's happened. The two of you made your choice. It's over. Everything goes dark, and you die. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. I can assure you that you're not dead. And to answer your second question, you're here to slay the princess. I literally told you that a second ago. If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. Yes, he didn't approve of us last time, did he? If we're going to save our beloved, we'll have to be sneaky about it. Our 
beloved. Yes, you'll have to be very sneaky about your intentions if you're going to try and save the princess. Ah, so all of the cards are on the table. Then you should know that we and the princess are in love, and the four of us will be foiling any and all assassination attempts you've got in the works. We'll see about that. Whatever you do, just be sure to ignore him specifically. It sounds like he's the sort who'd sacrifice the whole world for a peck on the cheek. What can I say? A world without love is a world that isn't worth saving. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. We already told you we're not playing along with your little game. It's your lies that can't be trusted. Her beauty is the only thing in the world we can believe in. I think we've already been over this. I'm pretty sure he just likes the sound of his own voice. I do, but I also speak from the heart. My passions are too great to be stifled. They must be expressed. Sure, yeah, your passions are strong and all, but not everyone needs to hear them. Some things are better kept quiet. Don't pay their bickering any mind. Focus on the task ahead. The interior of the cabin is clean and elegant, its stone walls draped in fine threaded tapestries, a prison befitting a royal prisoner. The only furniture of note is an ornate wooden table with a pristine blade perched on its edge. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. You take the blade from the table. It will be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. I suppose if we're to play the role of dashing knight, we need an equally dashing sword. That way she'll know we can defend her from her enemies. Hopefully it doesn't put her on edge, and hopefully it doesn't get turned on us again. There's no use arguing over motivations right now. It's good that you took the blade. You'll need it to do your job. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing an intricate stairwell. Gold-trimmed carpet glimmers in the light of the torches positioned along the walls. The basement almost seems welcoming in the dim firelight. But it's still a stone basement. If the princess lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favour. A soft voice carries up the stairs. Hello? Is someone there? Her voice. It's somehow even more beautiful than last time. I can hear wedding bells already. I've held my tongue till now, but you're taking this a little too far. We barely even know the princess. We can still do right by her without all this over-the-top fawning. Yes, for everyone's sake, you're not in love. <sighs> Just remember that her charms are all part of the manipulation. walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall. My love, we're here to rescue you from your unjust and foul imprisonment. You know she can't hear you, right? She may not be able to hear my words, but surely she can hear my spirit. Oh, your spirit's plenty loud, all right. It's you, my dashing hero. I was so worried you wouldn't come back. Did you hear that? She said we're dashing. 
and she called us a hero. Flattery really goes a long way with the two of you, doesn't it? Waiting for you to come back. I didn't want to believe your ravings back in the woods, but this is next to incontrovertible evidence. You've been here before. That's right, villain. And you killed us. Well, she killed us. Only because he made us try and kill her, it was self-defense. Our beloved's hands remain unstained by cruelty. And you've died before. So an entire world has been damned to oblivion. I'd really hoped I'd be the first, but what's done is done. What matters is you have a chance to do it right this time. We damned a whole world, but everything reset. Nothing resets, you're just somewhere else, and you can't keep hopping between worlds forever. Especially not without leaving a trail of incomprehensible devastation behind you. <sighs> this is horrible. Horrible for you, maybe, but we've been given another opportunity to sweep her off her feet and treat her like the lady she is. Now, hold on, if she actually ended a world, are you sure we want to do this? Are you sure we want to rescue her? We never saw a world end, and now I'm even more certain that we must chase our heroic and romantic destiny than I've ever been. I shan't let anyone convince us otherwise. Are you listening to him? He's lost it. Don't let him distract you. Just do your job. died, and now we're talking. I'm okay with whatever you come up with. You can cut my arm off again. We won't be laying a finger on her perfect wrists, and indeed, we won't even have to. Do you see how dainty her hands are? We'll be able to slip her right out with no harm done. What? No, she's a prisoner here. You can't just slip her hand through the chains. Why are you two arguing over the logistics of slipping her hand out of her shackles? She just said she'd be okay with any idea we came up with. Am I the only one here who thinks that's weird? She didn't care last time. Why should she care this time? That's our stoic, smiling angel. No, you're right. It's extremely bizarre behaviour and further evidence that she's a monster who's not to be trusted. Go ahead and slay her. No, I can't let you do that. If you take another step towards the princess, I'll... You'll what? Take over our body and force us to try and kill her? Yes. Not on my watch, villain. My passions contain tight depths, and if you try anything that might harm our dearest, I will end our life without a second thought. You wouldn't. I would. I'd listen to him if I were you. He has a lot of strong feelings, and doesn't the world end if we don't stop her? <sighs> you approach the princess and gingerly slide her hand from her bindings. That shouldn't have worked. I'll be damned. We're doomed. I can't believe it. But I guess I have to. I told you, there's no life more worth living than that of a true believer. I'm free, and you're not trying to kill me this time. Thank you. Thank you so much. The princess jumps up and smothers you in a joyful embrace. Ugh. Are you sure you want to do this? Just one slip of the wrist and your pristine blade is buried in her back and everyone out there is saved. Is that a threat? You know what we'll do if you try it. You're going to regret this. What do we do now?
Let me guess. End the world? Spoken with the rank cynicism of someone who has never felt love in his heart. I don't actually know. Nobody's ever asked me what I wanted before. She doesn't even know what she wants. You may have had her all wrong. What if this whole thing is just a misunderstanding? What if she doesn't want to end the world? You're so gullible. It's the only thing you've ever doubted, the actual truth. I think I want to leave. And I think... The princess closes her eyes in deep reflection. And then, she shrugs. I don't know. What do you want to do? Perfect. As the princess takes your hand in hers, you let your blade tumble uselessly to the floor, and with it tumbles the last hope for the entire world. We have each other. We don't need the world for our happy ending. I like to think that you do, actually. Look, I have my doubts, but the choice has been made and this is happening. You don't have to mope about it. I will mope about it, because moping is the only recourse you love-blind fools have left me with. You and the princess walk up the stairs hand in hand. Ugh, the way she's smiling at you. She doesn't have to be so happy about this. And what happens after we walk up the stairs? Oh, isn't that interesting? The door slams in your face and the lock clicks. That's a familiar move. Did I do that last time? Then you should know that you won't be able to leave. Oh no! Did someone lock us in here? That's not fair! We're supposed to leave now. She's right. It isn't fair. But the unfairnesses of the world are no match for the strength of true love. Enough with this true love nonsense, you just met her! Of course you wouldn't understand. Our passions run deeper than anything you have ever known. Are you listening to this? You don't have to go along with the every whim of that delusional voice. I'm just along for the ride at this point. Okay! Yeah, let's do it! Like a pair of teenagers in love, you and the princess place your hands on the door... together. Blech. And... The lock clicks, and the door creaks open. Are you kidding me? I told you our love was insurmountable. When the princess make your way upstairs, her freedom and the world's ruin are just a few moments away. If you don't mind, I'm going to fix myself a drink before you ruin everything. If I'm about to see the end of the world, I'd rather not see it sober. That's the way out! We're going to leave together, just like you wanted. Yes, I suppose you are going to do that, aren't you? You cross the room, opening the door to the cabin. And then you step out. A happy ending at last. We did it! What should we do now? Where did everything go? Where did he go? Oh, is he gone? I hadn't noticed. I was too busy staring deep into our beloved's eyes. I'm cold. Is being happy supposed to be so cold? Oh, quick, our feathers. Pluck them all and weave her a coat worthy of a princess. She 
she's gone. Where does she go? Should we try and find her? And is that a mirror? Why is it here? Why now? There's a world beyond the endless walls of the long quiet. We're supposed to be there. Do you know what we'll find out there? There is a warmth and sadness in me at the thought of people. Fresh tears on a winter's day. They are not like us. They do not last. This one is soft and delicate. You molded her to love you, and she'll make for a gentle heart. Do not mourn her. She has served her purpose. No, their thoughts are quiet. Do you think your narrator lives in the spaces beyond? Do not look to one who fears me for your truth. The only answers worth knowing are those we can find within ourselves. You've already tried waiting, but I understand if you need more time. I'll wait with you. The next time I see you, each of us will finally know what we are. I will be here, waiting for you. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. Does it? Are you a monarchist? Is slaying a princess that much worse than slaying a fisherman, or a miller, or a seamstress? If anything, slaying a princess is much better than slaying a seamstress. Seamstresses contribute something of value to society. Unfortunately, you're the only one who can pull this off. I don't make the rules. I wish I did, but I don't. Don't mention it. It's all part of the job. You make your way up the short path to the cabin. You'll find the princess within. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, 
and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. The interior of the cabin is almost entirely bare. The air is stale and musty, and the floor and walls are painted in a fine layer of dust. The only furniture of note is a plain wooden table. Perched on that table is a pristine blade. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. You take the blade from the table. It'd be rather difficult to slay the princess and save the world without it. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a staircase faintly illuminated by an unseen light in the room below. This is an oppressive place. The air feels heavy and damp, a hint of rot filtering from the ancient wood. If the princess really lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favour. Her voice carries up the stairs. Who's there? She sounds dangerous. It's almost as if she's the one in charge down here. Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. Don't be a stranger. And it's been so long since I've had any visitors. Come on down. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's so coldly beautiful. Is she really a threat to the world? Focus on the task at hand. And there you are. Are you here to kill me or something? You step forward, your grip on the blade tightening as you steal your resolve. Oh? No talking then? Fine. What even makes you think you can kill me? I'm probably chained up in this basement for a reason, right? And if that knife is the only weapon you have, you'll have to get close enough to use it. So, you should just drop it. Best not to risk finding out what I can do. She's unarmed. If you hesitate now, it'll be too late. End this. Then I'm not talking to you. I guess we are. For the love of everything, just slay her already. Or drop the blade. Do something. You stare at the princess, squinting fiercely. She squints back. The two of you are going to do this forever, aren't you? You'll have to blink eventually. Just make a choice. The blade tumbles out of your trembling hands and drops to the floor with an unceremonious clack. Thank you. Maybe now we can just talk. Against your better judgment, you step forward to speak with the princess face to face. Unarmed. We'll be fine. I don't know what you're hoping to accomplish here, but I can assure you there's no reasoning with her. <sighs> Just make sure you don't forget about the blade on the floor. You're going to need it. So here we are. What an awkward start to a relationship. Oh? Have you decided what to do with me? You know why you're here. Oh, you have to be kidding me. 
you walk up to the chains binding the princess to the wall and give them a tug. They're large and heavy, far too solid for you to even imagine trying to break them apart. I'm guessing you don't have the key. Maybe it's somewhere upstairs. Doubtful. Whoever locked the princess away down here intended for her to never see the light of day. They wouldn't have just left the key to her chains somewhere in the cabin. I'll be here. You attempt to make your way out of the basement, but the door at the top of the stairs slams shut. You hear the click of a lock sliding into place. Is someone else here? You make your way back to the bottom of the stairs. This would have been so much easier if you'd simply slain her like you were supposed to. Easier for whom? Easier for everyone. I heard the door slam. They locked you down here too, didn't they? The knife. Pick it up and cut me out of here. You won't like what happens if you do that. Without hesitation, you bring the blade down. The princess flinches as you strike and your weapon sinks into her shoulder. You bastard. If I have to kill you to leave this place, I'll do it. Do you hear the conviction in her voice? Do you see that razor sharpness in her gaze? I thought we had the upper hand, but it's as if she's barely even threatened by us. It's an act. She's unarmed and there's nothing she can do to hurt you. I'm not so sure. Don't waver now. As you raise your blade to strike again, she kicks out, knocking your legs out from under you. The two of you struggle on the ground. You lash out with the blade, slicing wherever you can. Her fists connect with your body again and again, each blow stronger than the last, shattering bone and rupturing tissue with reckless abandon. Forget trying to rescue her. This is about survival now. Give her everything you've got. You roll out of her grasp and shakily push yourself back to your feet. Though every inch of you is in pain, the princess probably has it worse. Blood pours out from countless gashes, staining her once pristine dress. She pauses for a moment, catching her breath, staring at you with wild eyes. We can still turn this around. The princess is still chained to the wall. There's nothing she can do to stop you from getting out of here. What if she doesn't succumb to her wounds? Whatever she is, she's so much more dangerous than I thought she'd be. You rush up the stairs and dive past the threshold. You're safe. close the basement door, locking it behind you and quickly barricading it with the heavy wooden table that once held the blade. Okay, we can make this work. She has an awful wound and we have all the time in the world. Playing jailkeeper for a while might make things a little easier. You settle in against the far wall to watch the basement door. It isn't long before you start to drift off, your eyelids heavy with fatigue. But sleep doesn't come. Instead, your rest is broken by a piercing, wailing voice calling out to you from the other side of the door. I know you're still there. Why don't you make things easier on yourself and let me out? It's not like this little door I'll hold for very long anyways. Um, it's probably a good idea to try to get back on my good side. She sounds terrifying. Like she's less of the princess you saw and more like something out of a nightmare. As she violently rattles the door, you do your best to shut her out of your mind. When I get out of here, I'm going to pick you apart piece by piece. I won't forget what you did, and I'll never forgive it. 
You don't know the kind of enemy he's made tonight. It doesn't sound like she's getting any weaker. No, it doesn't. be so sure about outlasting me. You're so brittle. So go ahead, rest, do whatever you think will help you be prepared. But know that I'm coming for you, and that when I find you, I will make you hurt. You put the princess's threats out of your mind as best you can, and huddle up against the wall. You jolt awake in the middle of the night to silence in the cabin. The ruckus has stopped, and the door to the basement is ajar, its lock broken, and the table shoved out of the way. Where is she? Thanks for helping me get out of that awful basement. You try and stumble to your feet, but as the princess draws near, it's as though your body simply stops working. It isn't all at once. The paralysis comes in waves. First your toes go numb, and then your feet, and then your legs. You lie prone on the floor of the cabin, unable to do anything but witness her approach. Whose side are you on? Yours, of course. But I have a duty to uphold the truth. Lying about the facts of the situation doesn't change them. So helpless. I can take my time with you, can't I? She steps closer, one silent footfall at a time, cocking her head in curiosity as you feel your organs shutting down one by one. Or maybe I can't take my time with you. You don't look well, a little green around the gills. What a shame. If you'd only helped me get out of here, we could have done such wonderful things together. Your lungs stop drawing in breath, and your heart freezes in your chest. You have seconds left. I'd say better luck next time, but we both know this is the end, don't we? It can't be. This can't actually be how everything ends. I'm sorry, but it is. Everything goes dark, and you die. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. I don't think lying and cheating is a thing. She was very direct with us last time. Or at least she was direct with us after we decided to lock her away. It doesn't matter. Don't trust anyone. The interior of the cabin is plain. The smooth wood of the walls almost featureless. The only furniture of note is a lone table, knocked on its side in the corner of the room. A pristine blade stands between you and the open, inviting basement doorway. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. Hold on. What happened to the door? It's just an empty frame. She's already gotten out, hasn't she? And she's ready for us. She's been waiting. Can't you feel her eyes on us? I'm going to need all of you to pull yourselves together. 
the princess has not already gotten out. But if you keep getting stuck in your head like this, you're going to struggle to get the job done. So deep breath in, deep breath out. Your task awaits, and only you can do it. You reach down and pick the blade up off the floor. It would be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. Good. Steel can't lie to us. Is it gonna be enough, though? Couldn't you have given us something else? Something... I don't know. Better than a knife? Could we have a bomb? The blade is the only thing you need to finish your task. You're more than capable of pulling this off, so long as you don't lose faith in yourself. Those are the words of someone who knows he's sending us to our death. You cross over the threshold and onto a series of isolated steps, suspended in darkness. More eyes, too. You never mention the eyes! The air seeping up from below reminds you of fresh lightning and static, as if you're descending into a place that isn't meant for a creature of flesh and blood. If the princess lives here, slaying her would probably be doing her a favour. Her cruel and playful voice prances up the stairs. I didn't think you'd come back. We're gonna have a lot of fun, you and I. Come back? She must have you confused with someone else. You really don't remember, do you? It doesn't matter, we need a game plan. We know we can't just go down there unprepared. Didn't you hear my warning a minute ago? She can't be trusted. Talking won't do you any good. Something tells me she isn't going to be very keen on talking anyway. You make your way to the bottom of the stairs. As you emerge, you find yourself between two loose rows of white wooden planks, suspended in nothingness. A smattering of cobblestones, visible against the inky black of the basement, mark where the floor should be, forming vague pathways. At what seems to be the end of the room, they diverge in opposite directions, left and right. She could be anywhere, and there's nowhere for us to hide. We're completely exposed. Are you really not going to comment on how weird this place is? No, I'm not. Somebody needs to be the voice of reason here, and it certainly isn't you. Excuse me, I'm being incredibly reasonable. You're the one who's just matter-of-factly describing whatever the hell we're looking at like it's an ordinary basement. We're going to die down here. I don't want to die again. Please stop saying that. You're only going to make things worse. Just pick a direction and start moving. I wouldn't give it too much thought if I were you. It doesn't really matter. Because either way you go, I'm going to find you. You turn to the right. A faintly outlined path lies before you. There you are. I told you I was going to find you. As the princess approaches, your legs suddenly go numb. Your arms quickly follow. This is it, isn't it? And you brought your little knife with you again. Cute. There has to be a way out of this. Think. Think! What did you do? Pull yourself together. She isn't supposed to be like this. I wonder how many times I'll get to play with you before you break. Out as your blood begins to coagulate, it's as if every part of your being is coming to a lurching halt. Heart. Lungs. Liver. Nerves. Heart. Lungs. Liver. Nerves. Heart. Lungs. Your lungs pull in a desperate gulp of air as your eyes shoot back open. What are you doing? I'm working! 
Do you want this body to function, or do you want... And then experience stops once more as your body reapproaches death. Okay, whatever you were doing, please just start doing it again. Are you sure about that? Are you sure that's what you want, or do you want to interrupt me some more? You have seconds left. Yes, I'm sure. Again, your eyes shoot open as you gasp for breath. You can't decide what you want to do, can you? Oh well, standing there gasping like a fish is more fun than dead. Even if you look ridiculous. She isn't attacking us. Why? The why doesn't matter. She's already proven her ill intent. Don't lose sight of your mission. Your weapon is still in your hands. Strike at her and end this before it's too late. Because I don't want to. And even if I did, I don't have to. Look at the way you're struggling to stay alive. It's taking everything you have to keep your heart pumping right now. And I'm enjoying the show. The princess leans forward, bringing her masked lips close to your ear. If I want to see you gone, all I need to do is break your concentration. Heart, lungs, liver, nerves. Heart, lungs, liver, nerves. She slowly runs her velvet glove across the base of your neck. It feels like static. And then... Shit, shit, make her stop! Hey, snap out of it. Okay, deep breath. Deep breath, we're fine. Heart, lungs... Liver, nerves, heart, your back. One moment, and then you're gone. Just like that. Ah, and there's the fear. She pulls away. But that wouldn't be very fun, now would it? I've already done that. I am. It's not my fault that you can't handle being around me. Lungs, liver, nerves, heart, lungs, liver, nerves, heart, lungs. I tried to leave while you suffocated, but that stupid cabin wouldn't let me. So I started to drag your body out with me and then. Well, you died before I could get to the door. And then I was here, and now you are here too. I don't think I can leave without you, and dead doesn't count. And as much as I love what we have going on, I have bigger plans than tormenting one poor little creature forever. I want to read. I am being nice. You're alive, aren't you? And you died of fright as soon as you saw me last time. I didn't think keeping you alive was an option. But it looks like that's not a problem anymore. At least not for me. You seem miserable. What? No! Please come around. Oh, this is going to be so wonderful. No, I'm not going to let this happen. I, before you can utter another word, your body stops moving. And, uh, do you think you could just wrest control away from us? This body's barely functioning as it is. Doesn't the world end if we fail to stop her? Won't letting us die here just make it end faster? Shit. Lungs, liver, nerves, heart, lungs. With a flick of the princess's wrist, the stairs slide back into place. I can't believe you're making me watch you damn everyone to torment and oblivion. Go ahead. I'll be right behind you. You're not wrong, but 
Maybe you should let me handle the feedback. Just focus on keeping us alive. <laughs> right. Heart, lungs, liver, nerves, heart. Besides, I get the feeling she's telling the truth. She needs us alive. Nerves, heart, lungs, liver. What? Are you scared of turning your back to me? You don't have to be worried that I'm going to do something bad. You're too important to me now. Besides, what if I lost track of you and trapped the stairs on accident? I wouldn't want that to happen. And I don't think you'd want that to happen either. So go on. Go ahead. She urges you forward like one might a reluctant pet. You place a shaky foot on the first step and begin your ascent from the basement. You can feel the static prickling of the princess on your neck, your limbs buzzing with pins and needles, an uncomfortable and constant reminder that you exist, and that your existence is so very precarious. You're almost there. The only thing left between you and the cabin is the now shut door to the basement. It would be a real shame if it had locked behind you. Oh, you snake. There wasn't even a door when we first got here. The door was from last time. I told you we shouldn't trust him. I know he's messing with us, but you can't lose your cool. We need you right now. Remember? Yes, I remember. Of course I remember. Heart, lungs, liver, nerves. This is so frustrating. Heart, lungs, thank you. And you? You'd really rather us die down here than let her out? Of course I would. As much as I want you to have a happy ending, the fate of the world is a little more important and you still have a weapon. You can still make this right. Oh, look at that. It's locked. What a relief for the world. It'll open. You just have to give it a tug. You pull against the door. The lock gently clicks open in response to your effort, and the door creaks on its hinges. This isn't right. That's not even the way it's supposed to swing. It's supposed to swing out. You're not nearly as powerful as you'd have us think, are you? Ahem. <clears throat> Heart. Lungs. Liver. Nerves. Heart. Anyways, like he said, you're not really in control here, are you? I never said I was. If I was in control here, why would I need you to slay her? Liver. I don't know. Secret reasons? The door is open. What are you dawdling for? It's time for us to go. The world is waiting. Shit. The princess moves past you into the cabin. This is it. This is your final moment to make things right. Kill her. I thought you wanted us to slay her. It's the same thing. Do it. Do it now. Do it now or everything is over. Okay. What do we do? I said, what do we do? Oh, do you want to hear from me now? Yes. Well, I thought you needed me to run the autonomic nervous system. We do, but this is important. Look, I'll even do it myself. Just tell us who to trust. Uh, brain? Heart. Right, heart. Lungs, lungs, liver, no. Okay, thanks. I got it. Heart, lungs, liver, nerves. Heart. You're terrible at this. I know. I'm doing my best. Yes, it's very hard to stay focused on running things when other people are talking to you, isn't it? What are you doing? Heart, lungs. Liver, nerves. Finally, Heart. I can talk. Uh, now, what were you asking me? Running everything liver. kind of feels like popping nerves. in and out of 
it's consciousness. It's what? easy to lose track of things. They were asking you nerves. for your blessing to trust me. Heart. Oh, Blast. that's right. Yeah, fuck this guy. Liver. Can't trust him. Nerves. Really? Heart. So you'd have them trust her? Nerves. Oh, of course not. Nerves. Can't trust anybody here but ourselves, Heart. but I guess that Lungs. leaves us back where we started, Liver. doesn't it? I suppose if I had to make a choice, I'd pick the one that doesn't make our organs shut down. Thank you for your gracious show of support. But that's a marginal preference. We'll have to deal with him later. I'd just rather deal with him while our organs are intact. Whatever. You heard what he had to say. So whether you trust me or not, killing her is still the best Nay, it's the only option you have worth taking. All right, I'm done. You can let me take over again. Finally, that was awful. I really don't know how you do it. You've been standing there staring blankly for a while now. And I have to say my patience is running a little thin. So don't make a lady wait any longer, okay? Open the door! The doorknob twists in your hand, revealing the forested path beyond the cabin, Liver. Yes, bastard. You've actually done it, Liver. You've actually nerves. Heart. Lungs. Liver. It's so beautiful. I can't wait to ruin it. But it's so cold, too. It's itching against my skin. Why is it so cold? She's gone. Where does she go? Should we try and find her? And is that a... Why is it here? Why now? I think you know what I mean. The narrator. Yes. I suppose that's my job, isn't it? You needed help, after all. An objective voice to guide your blade. You were never supposed to see me. I wonder how many worlds you've damned to extinction to fall this far. Then ask them, and make it quick. I won't last for long now that you can see me. We've already crossed the point of no return. There's no saving me now. Not that there's ever been much of me to save. Oh, I'm nothing like you. I am an echo. Likely one of many. Somebody made you, after all, and I'm what's left of him. Not that I'm the only one who can make that claim. I'm sure you've met many others like me. Of course. That is by both necessity and design. This construct you're in exists in many places at once. Any time you fail, any time you've thought yourself dead, it will restart and shunt both your consciousness and hers into another world. But you'll be awake soon. And then it won't be able to work like that anymore. I do. The people out there are real. 
No matter what you do to them, no matter what you enable, I want you to remember that. No, I am not a part of you. But that's all a matter of perspective, isn't it? From one vantage point I must seem wholly foreign, but from another, well, all the versions of me that have existed have collectively heard your every thought and driven your every action. If that is being part of you, then what is? Nobody alive has done anything to you. I'm all gone. If you and the princess want to smite the rest of them for the crimes of a dead man, if you really want to be that petty, there isn't much I can do to stop you. Soon I'll be gone entirely and you'll be left alone with your final choice. So allow me to make my final request. The princess contains death itself within her, but I wove you into being with all the power you need to destroy her forever. Do it. Slay her, and rid the world of death and suffering. It doesn't hurt. I don't feel pain. Not physically. I've said my piece, and my time is up. It's like I said, I'm just an echo, and echoes always fade away. You know what you have to do. I can finally see you, and you can finally see me. It's been so long, and my heart has ached for this moment. I've missed you dearly. Every word you spoke found its way to me. I know him, and I know his construct. He was deluded by his fear of death. Pay him no mind. Ever the passive player, always reacting and never acting. But it's woven into your nature, isn't it? When the Echo spun us from one into two, he gave you a choice and me a role to play. I am not death but I contain it in my multitudes. So, will you attempt to destroy me and bring about a world devoid of death and the possibility of meaning? Or, will you open the final doors to our liberation? Nothing brings me greater joy than to hear those words. The final peace lies with you. you. 
It's magnificent. Everything, just like it always has been, and just like it always will be.